Welcome to Smash Bra. Here we discuss our favorite pop culture from retro video games, TV shows, movies, comics, wrestling, and all types of other stuff while getting smashed on a couple. Or several brews. Which we'll review at the end of the episode. This is Gamer Blurred. And Sam. And let's get smashed. Welcome everybody to episode six of Smash Bros. As you guys know, the even numbered episodes tend to get a little boozy. Uh, so today we are going to actually be talking about a mixed bag of DC. So this is going to involve some Snyder Cut, some Injustice, the DC animation, uh, and a little bit more. But first, uh, Sam, what are we sipping on today? I am sipping on a Legintas Maximus Colossal IPA. Beer, SPX, PPL, MVM, BL. That's fun. Uh, it is... What does it say? Lugun, what is it? Lagunitas. Okay. Uh, it is... This is a tide in the fairs of big IPAs, which posits that a floor of hops leads to the fortune in liquid. In our XXV plus years of brewing... Big IPAs, we've learned this to be mostly true, with one big caveat. Balance is everything. We believe Maximus to be exactly that. Etsu, let us know. Maximus IPA is the liquid paragon of decades-long obsession with hop forwards, brewing expression in a harmonious, thunderous voice for all the hop heads. Uh, it's... Nope. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, oh, glad, you know. I'm glad he stopped himself because as <laughs> always we have to do the review at the it's end. It's beer. But I will say I so if you tuned into the last episode, I picked these beers for Sam. Mm. Uh, and this one has like a dog on the can. It's pretty cool. It's Maximus. Sounds like a superhero again. I thought it was kind of thematical to what we were doing. I don't know how Sam feels, but Maximus I, is Roman. I'm just saying, it seems like Maximus is a uh, MCU character. Not DZ character, but whatever, I will say. It is a character. Yeah. Uh, but I will say this time, so Sam has a summary to his beer. Mine does not. So take that for whatever it's worth, Sam. Mine is Hindsight. It's a New England IPA. Uh, it's from Timberyard Brewing Company. It's a... 6.9, which isn't too, too bad. And it just says, we are thrilled to share our beer with you. Keep it cold and enjoy it in good health and good friends. Uh, I definitely feel like I'm at that right now. So we'll let you know how these are. So let's get into it. So we're going to start off with the Injustice games. Well, Injustice in general. So Injustice is um, an alternate universe of the normal DC uh, where basically Superman is running this whole like totalitarian, totalitarian. Is that how you say it? Totalitarian. Totalitarian? No, no. Sometimes we suck with fucking words. <laughs> um, <Did> totalitarian. <laughs> so he's he's running this regime where he's just he's doing whatever needs to be done. You know, no matter the cost, very peacemakerish. Like, uh, we're not going to talk about that right now. You know, peacemaker is awesome. That's that's a whole other episode. For sure. But uh, so it starts off with uh, Year Zero, and Year Zero is absolutely crazy. So basically, what happens is um, the Joker decides to try to mess with Superman, uh, where he takes control of him, and you know he'll be able to do whatever he wants to do. Superman figures it out, but like Joker's kind of like, all right, I think I kind of get it. I know what I can do. And this sparks even more inspiration for him to drive Superman crazy. And what he ends up doing is he steals some serum from the Scarecrow and he tricks Superman into thinking that he's fighting Doomsday. And it turns out that it is all just a hallucination and he is fighting his pregnant, pregnant wife. Yes. Whose heart 
is connected to a nuclear bomb. And when her heart stops, the nuclear bomb goes off. So obviously Superman thinking he's doing what he needs to do kills doomsday, which kills his pregnant wife, Lois. And this blows up. Um, I was about to say Gotham city, uh, not Gotham city. Um, Metropolis. Metropolis and kills a bunch of people. And Joker gets exactly what he wants. He drives Superman absolutely crazy, but um, Batman takes Joker into custody and he has him in a room. He is trying to interrogate him onto what was his whole thought process, which he reveals like exactly what he's trying to do. You got the idea while battering a kitten to death with a puppy. <laughs> so Superman comes flying in and he's like, I want some justice and Batman's trying to talk him down and Joker's doing what Joker does best and he's just taunting the fuck out uh, of Superman. And Superman's like pretty much getting at Batman for what he's never been able to do, which is take these criminals off the street permanently. And Batman's just saying, you know, that's not what we do. Like, we're trying to re- rehabilitate, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And Superman's like, I'm not here about that life. And he punches the Joker through his fucking chest and kills him, which is probably one of the gruesomest scenes I've ever seen in a comic book or video game or anything ever. Like, it was, it's awesome. It's great. So basically from here on out, Uh, Like I said, Superman starts running this regime where he's like, you know, we're going to make sure that peace is done at any cost possible, which puts him pretty much against every nation, uh, and he will shoot them down as he needs to. Puts him at odds with Batman and all of his previous uh, friends. But it's just, it's a great storyline. The Injustice games themselves were absolutely great. Um, I played Injustice 2, actually, before I played Injustice 1. Um, absolutely love the games. They were great storylines. Um, Harley Quinn is probably one of the greatest characters oh, that came out of that. Like, they really gave her an awesome arc. Um, in Injustice 2, they had Kara Danvers as Superwoman. Uh, she comes in, <clears throat> you know, helping to fight this whole regime. Batman was just awesome. Like he has like the, um, the brother eye, like watching everything going on to earth that gets taken over. Like, it's just, there's a lot of ups and downs, twists and turns, like probably one of the greatest stories that they've done that is completely non-canon to anything that's going on. Um, I don't know, Sam, what are your thoughts on you know, Justice? No, Injustice, like, so I didn't, I've never played the game, but I listened to uh, the comics uh, reviews and I've like, I've, I've skimmed through them a lot. And also I've watched the animated uh, movie. I know the animated movie was a little bit different than the video games. I mean, like, there's so much, so much you could do in 85 minutes. But on the lines that uh, Eric was saying, <laughs> the reason why these storylines become so interesting is because they're not what we've only and always heard. Like every like when it comes to animation things like that, we've heard of how the Justice League got together. We've heard how they faced Dark Side. We've heard so the idea of taking an like someone we love or I you know like 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 ideology of Superman like those you know it's the DC's version of the Boy Scout and to turn him bad and for him to have that idea. In order to make the world a better place, we have to take the humans out of it, basically. (laughs) It's like crazy. It's crazy, and it's good. And that's their version of Civil War, which, I mean, I don't know why, like, this isn't canon. Is this not canon? Not technically. They've never had a Civil War. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, is nuts, because, like, the idea of that, like, superheroes of two sides wouldn't, like, want to, like, face off on one thing that they feel different from the other. Like, so... So wait, DC always like they always like high five and say this is right. Kind of seems that way. And I, I will I will say this: when it comes to comic books, I started out very much a DC person. Like I I grew up in the eighties, so I had the Michael Keaton Batman, uh, Jack Nicholson Joker. Like that was my shit. That's what really got me kind of started into the comics. I love Batman, and then all of a sudden this cartoon comes along it's like x-men 90s cartoon 
We all know how much we love that. Totally got me into what theme was it? I don't know. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You do 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 Like, what, what are you doing? I was doing the beginning to get to that part. We. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Is that better for you? All right. Yeah. Um, like, name um, that too. Give me like, like the good one. Whatever. Anyways, <laughs> so I I went heavy into Marvel. I started collecting cards. Like, really got into the X Men really into that whole genre and it really wasn't until the batman animated series that i kind of got back into dc but it was still very much it was just batman like i didn't really know much about anything else in dc there was just already still so much coming out about marvel at that point that it really just kind of kept my my attention for everything so you know to sam's point where You know, we've always known certain things that these DC characters do. It actually makes a lot of sense. Like, you would think where Batman's a very righteous person. Mm -hmm. He doesn't kill. You know, he he subdues and he puts these people in jail. And it's like, yeah, you know, after a while, these people break out every single fucking time. Like, come on. You know, you have Superman who has his own rogues gallery. They're all either supernatural or alien in some way. So they usually go back off and do their own thing after he defeats them or, you know, they're just gone. Like, but he's not, he's not keeping them, keeping them in the same fucking city. Like every single time you have the flash who, at least to my knowledge of everything that he does. And uh, the Arrowverse is usually fighting either something similar to himself or, fast. uh Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fast character. I got go fast. Or something that makes him slow. Yeah. <laughs> like, or these characters that just like are easy to feel, but he still puts them probably in a better jail than um, Arkham. <laughs> you know, it's jail. like, it's, it's very, there's no due process. No, they just take the meta humans and then they throw them into a cage. They actually do t- hit on that a little bit in the hour first. Like, like, this is completely yeah. unethical. <laughs> should, should they be doing a little bit more before they just throw these people into a I mean, they did start, forever. like, maybe doing that, but, like, that was crazy <laughs> at the beginning that they would just be like, here you go. We're going to provide you meals. <laughs> but it's We're like, just scientists. We don't really yeah. know who you are. <laughs> you know, the arrow, he's always fighting this ass. But basically, like, these people all have technically different ideals. So you would think at some point, I liked. I, I they'd liked be like, "Hey, he started killing." Yeah, like maybe we should start doing something a little bit differently. And if you don't think my way, like maybe we should fight about a little bit. Like, no, there. I don't think there really has been anything. Like, they were great conference table in the just. They do. <laughs> <laughs> they really have it. They they. Come well, I'm pretty sure you get to watch due process and you're. <laughs> I'm pretty sure when one of your uh, due diligence. <laughs> When one of your benefactors is a fucking multi-billionaire, oh, yeah. it's you're like they're probably not talking about. Oh, crime. you think like, through that fucking satellite yeah, up there? There's there's probably like a naked lady with sushi on top of her, and then just like, yeah, what's going on, Bruce? And he's like, <laughs> oh, the fucking life. <laughs> no, there. No, this is not a tice me. <laughs> but anyways, all right. So, but yeah, like the thing though is, so all right, we have these, we have the animation. Yep. We have the video games, and yes. we have this dumpster fire of DCEU. Like, why Why is it that the animation of the video games are so much better? And like, I'll you've, right you've constantly talked about the animation. I know I need to get into it, but like, yes. what, what are some of your favorite animation? So the reason why the animation is better, I would have to pull, like, HBO Max. Which, by the way, shout out to HBO Max for the idea that they and DCU are uh, DC. DCU, yeah, DCU DC credit. EU. No, 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 the DCU credit union. Um, no, <laughs> DCU came together, and the DC uh, studios um, put all the shit on there, which was great. The reason why all the animation seems to be way better, like Under the Red Hood, um, and even like do, like Doomsday, like uh, the Just Sleep War, all these ones are great. Why? Because they don't treat us like we're assholes. 
they uh, immediately let you know, like, all right, if they're going to give you a little background, they'll like tap you into like, <laughs> like they'll tap you on the shoulder. and be like, here you go, just in case. <laughs> and then they get right fucking into it. Like you, d- and you know, they're only 85 minutes. Like if you want to develop character, you want to develop a story, fine. But if you're going to tell me the same fucking story <laughs> about how Bruce Wayne lost his parents, <laughs> I don't want to watch the show anymore. I don't want to watch this movie. I don't want to watch the show. Guess what? I don't give a fuck. He was an orphan. Like, guess what? He had a great dad. His name was Alfred. He's fantastic. <laughs> was he a little bit enabler? Yeah. But you know what? He like <laughs> he created a superstar of a son because this guy is a ninja. But I'm just saying with the animated movies is that they don't they don't treat you. They don't treat you like you're dumb. They and then and they just get into it and they tell the stories that are like made the like made the comic book successful. This so, is the reason this is between DC and MCU. MCU. Yeah, I think we were just talking about this in the last episode. Where MCU will tell you the story, and even if they have to give you a little bit, they'll give you. Yeah. But they develop character, they develop depth, depth. But the difference between DC and MCU, the MCU, is that. The MCU has developed characters we don't know mm. or didn't know or weren't as popular. Guardians of the Galaxy. Those fights that show up in that movie, mm. nobody really knows. Yeah. Like they're only so, popular now. But that's the thing. So again, please check out our last episode if you haven't. We talked about the MCU, which is just like such a tight universe. But if you look at the MCU as a whole, what origin stories have you actually seen? You have Captain America, fine. You have Iron Man, fine. And within Iron Man, you have Bucky as well. You have Captain Marvel, fine. Um, maybe a little bit of Black Panther. Yeah, but these the so with these, the, are, with these origins, there's still a story beyond like with the origin. And mm-hmm. if they're going to tell you an origin, they almost do it like they did in Deadpool. It's I'm as, Deadpool. It's as the story. Yeah, this is how I got is my power. going. And like, even with the Guardians of the Galaxy, I was like, these are people you have absolutely guarantee you probably have never heard of unless you are a deep, deep, deep comic yeah. fucking nerd. Which, and by the way, like, tracks is nothing like the comic. Yeah. And it's, but it's like, as the story goes on, you're like, all right, these people are meshing each other. They're, they're now kind of a team or whatever. They talk. But every other story within the MCU, there's no origin story. No. Especially for the people that you already know and are well established. Spider Man, did they hash that shit out? No, no, they threw him into Civil War, and you were like, I know Yeah, I know Spider Man is. I've watched all three episodes, yeah, like, all is, three movies. I've so watched all five movies. Great, yes. And that's that's oh, the, what happened to your Uncle Ben? I don't talk about yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, the end, like, thank but it's you. Like, no, we've seen how many iterations of Batman, each Batman. Has, has shown his fucking origin story, and finally they're run, they're coming out with the Batman. They're like, "We're gonna do something absolutely unheard of. We're not gonna tell the Batman origin." It's like, "Oh wow!" Because none of us know the Batman origin story. Bravo! You're <laughs> you're so brave. But they've already been like, he's dark, and he's like, he can't like, I'm like of yeah. course I'll go see, but he's dark and he's emotional. You're like, he oh, you're should. Upset. Be like, come on, yeah. this that's what we want, and like, uh, I'll get into this in a little bit, but it's like, that's one of my problems with the difference between the Snyder cut and the fucking weeding cut is that they were like, where we don't want a dark universe, we want something lighter. And it's like, no, MCU can be light, it's fine. Like, I want to see Robert Downey Jr. Um, you know, quipping one lines and you know being funny. I want to see, you know, Steve Rogers being like, "Oh, I understand that reference." Um, you yep. know, Peter Quill yep. being like a fucking pretty boy idiot. That's fine. Gotham is one of the darkest cities. What's dark in existence? Rain. Because there's constant crime going on. I don't need a cute hue going on. I don't need Batman given one-liners. Like, no, I want to see a dark fucking universe. Like, I want to see them coming in and beating the fuck out of everybody. Yes. Like, that's fine. 
I have no qualms with that. So why are you trying to make it like it's not supposed to be that way? No, and not even that is, yeah. If you watch the animations, Batman, what makes him funny that he's not. Yeah. So like, and the, what, how you do it is you just let him play like, and the, it's definitely true. Let him play off Barry Allen or Hal Jordan. Like that's what it is. That they'll be the ones that make like. By the way, Hal Jordan, Nathan Fillion is Hal Jordan. The animations are fit. But like, no, but like, have them be the like lighthearted, fun, haha, and then Batman do like Batman shit to make people laugh. That I I used to be like, because huh, Batman is Batman. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? He's, I don't love. And you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, you know, like, that's great. Like, I love it. Thank you. Well, it's like, so I was listening to a TikTok the other day, and it was a, a snippet from the animation show, and it was a Harvey Dent, and he's like, Batman, I have you tied up down here, and I have this detonator going off. And he's like, by the time I'm done with this, I'm going to click this detonator, unless the coin says differently. And he's like... Well, while you're talking, I guess I have nothing to say until you flip that coin. Like, yes, yeah. that's that's the one-liners I need to hear because it's like you use the other characters for yeah, he does this whole thing, he's, and then he he's no like, nonsense. He goes like, okay, yeah. <laughs> well, keep going. Yeah. like I guess <laughs> let's figure out what the coin says, bro. Like, that's I mean, dark, shrewd, who gives a shit. Like, that's a fun character. <laughs> Make him dark, shrew, and, like, who gives a shit? But, like, that's the problem with DC. Like, so, so DC. Like, DC's animations should, can and will. But, like, the reason why, even though how corny it could be, and the idea that the... Well, here's, okay, sorry. I like Teen Titans. I think they're great. I think Teen Titans Go is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like, I like Young Justice. But the idea that they live, they live in a tea tower, and the, the like in Young Justice, they live in a volcano mountain. I like it, it's stupid. Like, and then, and that's the reason. M's like the like Marvel got lucky, and they're the ones who started telling you that they live in real cities first. Yeah. So then they're like, "Well, we live in fake cities," and you're like, "Oh, okay. Well, where's Metropolis? Or in Metropolis?" And you're like, "Like, is it sunny there? Is it like like where is it?" They're like, it's, it's kind of an offshoot of New York. Yeah, you're like, "Oh, okay. Then where's Star City?" They're like, "Oh, shit!" Like. You're like, is that? And they're like, dark. Then they'll be like, Star City destroyed, though. And you're like, wait, Detroit's here? Where's Metropolis yeah. now? Like, is it New York? Because that well, means New York's alive. So even like in um, the Arrowverse. So we have uh, Barry. Yep. Central City. And um, what's his? Cleveland? What's his, um, <laughs> like, half brother? <laughs> the Black Flash. What's his name again? Oh, Wally? Wally. <laughs> Well, he was like, I'm going to go to fucking Star City. And it's like, so where, like, where are you going? How far away is that? Like, it seems like that is like a cross country because he can't just come back. Well, like, isn't Green Emerald way. City? Like, it seems like these are all so, like. You're like, are you too far? Yeah. Or not? Like, 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 so just to give you guys perspective, depending on where you're fucking listening to in the country. So it's like, all right, I live 30 minutes outside of Boston, which is a very known city of. Massachusetts. Word. And then there's Amherst, which is three hours away. Like, if I was like, all right, hey, I'm going to go to Amherst. I'll see you guys soon. Like, no. You're not? I'm, you're okay, not going to see me unless I make a actual, like, significant effort to come back down here. Now, we have, like, Burlington, which is 10 minutes away. And I'm like, I'm going to Burlington. I'll see you guys later. Like, yeah. I'm probably coming around, like, Every once in a while, yeah, it's not that far away. So I'm like, this is the context I need when they're like, oh, we're going to go to Star City. Like, where the fuck is Star City? How far away is this? Back in Metropolis. (laughs) Okay. But like, no. So so is Metropolis next to the fucking Central City? Is it next to Gotham? How far away are they? Are we in San Fran? Are we in (laughs) Houston? Are we in Dallas? Are we in, like, New York? Yeah, is this, like, is this Texas? Cleveland, Detroit, like, (laughs) Chicago? Texas, where every city is, like, fucking 50 miles away? I mean, yeah, like, what are we doing? (laughs) But, like, that go without a weird tangent. But, like, so, okay, so, like, now, like, with Young Justice, the reason why you can enjoy them, and the reason why it's fun, is because now you're developing characters we don't know. Like, who's Tigris? Who's Artemis? Like, 
okay, I know Dick Grayson. And then he kind of aced out a little bit. But, like, at the same time, we're still developing what, he, like, how he mentioned the team. Wally. Wally didn't, like, spoiler alert. Wally dies in Young Justice. You're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, Clark Kent. Like, even, well, not Clark Kent, sorry. Um, oh, what the fuck was this? Is he the clone? Yeah, what is his name? It's not Clark. Connor. Connor, Connor Kent. Like, you're like, oh, okay. And he dies too. And then you're like, okay. Like, and then you, you're dealing with um, uh, Martian Manhunter's niece. And like, you're dealing with, you know, and you're like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Like, these are characters I don't know. These are characters that are developing with us. You know what I mean? Like, you get to learn something new. And that's the reason why I like the MCU. Like, you know Scarlet Witch. But now you know Scarlet Witch. Like, you're like, I know her every, like, you can know everything about her. But then they're like, but there's no mutants. And you're like, shit. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to a new world. Yeah, and you're like, still, cool. They'll still explain it. Figure it yeah, out. Yeah. And then, like, even, like, with Iron Man, they're like, yeah, you know this, baby. Like, you know, <laughs> did you watch the 80s cartoon no one did? Yeah. <laughs> like, here's fun. Here's Iron Man. I got a thousand suits. Like, cool, cool, cool. We'll, del- de- we'll develop them differently. But that's the problem with, I always, and this is just becoming what I have a problem with DCU. <laughs> uh, the problem I have with DCU is that uh, they, 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 they keep rehashing the same fucking four stories. And this were the 18th Batman movie. Yeah, so that's, it's not even that. So let me hop into the video games then. What my problem is with, and this actually goes for both Marvel and DC or any, any, video game that has an established fucking canon is they go, we have all this history, all these stories, and they just go, you know what? Yeah, we're going to do our own thing. Let's make this fucking video game. But I will say about the DC universe is that their video games are pretty well done because they'll, they'll take the characters but they'll still do a very unique story about it. So it's like, they're not rehashing the same stuff that you know over and over and over again. So like, take the Batman Arkham series. Very, very well done games. And they were like, you know, all these characters that you know and you love and you've seen before, but they still made you learn new things about them. Like even with Batman, it was like, this was taking... It was pretty much the Batman from the 90s comics because it was uh, Kevin Conway. Yes. Who was voicing it. Uh, I think Mark Hamill was the Joker. Um, You know, these two established characters you have, but like they were still taking a new story and working through it. Like Batman being a fucking detective because like you usually think of Batman as this badass, you know, beating up fucking criminals. But it's like at the end of the day, he's still, he's a detective. He is a ninja, so you're yes. sneaking through buildings. Like he thrives on the fear of criminals. You're you're scaring these criminals as they're patrolling these buildings. Like oh, they hear the stories of the Batman. Like they don't want to be alone, and like they hear stuff. They're like, oh, 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 I hear that? Like, what's that? It, like, it like... makes you feel like you're Batman. the Batman. Like that. Those games were just so awesome. And then they're coming out with the Suicide Squad movie, um, video game, which I'm super excited about. Wait, there? They are. So it's which uh, one though? The it's Suicide Suicide Squad. It's the- Suicide Squad kills the Justice League, I believe. And so it's like Sounds they're cool. taking this that ragtag squad of people. So like it's going to be from James Guns. Uh, I think. Well, most of the people. So it's going to be um, Harley Quinn. Uh, they have like King Shark. They have Boomerang Man. Um, I think it's going to actually end up being um, detachable arms. No, um, not uh, who was the who was Will Smith? Um, uh, Deadshot. Deadshot. It's going to be Deadshot instead of Bloodsport, um, Blood which which is fine. They're essentially the same pe- people. I think Peacemaker might be in it, but like still, like who's the, also the trailers Deadshot? you see, like it looks like a fun game. It's a new story. Like they're they're taking the same fun universe for like making something of it. They're actually gonna do a um, the uh, Justice League like Knights, so it's gonna be Nightwing, um, Batgirl, um, Red Hood, like 
basically taking it on the same type of story as the Batman Arkham series. Yeah. Like this is Oh, I've heard of that. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. These are the things like I want to do. Like, like I yeah. want to be thrown into this universe and like feel like I'm this like Red Hood as much shit as he gets, like get shit done. Like I wanna I wanna feel what that's like as I haven't watched Titan season three, but I heard it's good. Yeah, I, I need to watch that one too. Like that was another show. Like, I kind of wish we went into the shows a little bit. Maybe, maybe for the future. Um, Titans was surprising. I, I season one was not a fan. I season not, two, yeah. they started going down a different path. And this is what I think you said it. I think you were like, I think they thought, oh shit, now we have like our audience, and we don't have to fear being like, like we don't have to fear ratings, yeah. and we don't have to fear like being open to everybody and they're like dude like the whole deathstroke storyline like like it was like deathstroke's kid they used him manipulated him that was wrong you know shit and they're like why is this dude from game of thrones (laughs) bruce wayne that's weird like but it was just like it was really good yeah it was i was i thought it was surprisingly the second second season i was like okay i remember sam was asking me about that and i'm like just stick with it through the first season because it was it was hard to get through until like the very last few episodes and i'm like you gotta get through it in the second episode the second season i was like this is the shit i still need to watch the third but like what really hooked me was actually the um do patrol episode i was like these characters are way more interesting than anyone i've seen in this whole first season of titans and like i love the doom patrol um Show. The you know, series like that that is just great. No, the the problem with that one is <laughs> no, but this is the problem with DC. Uh the problem with that Doom Patrol episode of Titans, they had a different they had a different head guy. I forgot yeah. his name. I can't get off the top of my head. We'll just go say the professor because I have professor, but now about. when we went to the show, it was Tim uh it was Timothy uh not all of it, it was Timothy Dalton. Mm. But in that other one, it was some dude that they probably just got. You yeah. know what I mean? And they're like, and then of course they come out and they're like, yeah, because it's different universes. <laughs> and you're like, fuck you. <laughs> like, why do you do this to yourself? Like, the biggest problem that kind of came out of all the Arrowverse was that they're like, yeah, but it's like Earth 65. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you find out the DCEU is a different Earth. Like, they're like, they're like, oh, okay. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, why is this? Like, why are you continuing? Like, why don't you just create continuity? Because they don't know how to do it. Just because make one it. dude come, like, take me. <laughs> I'd be like, no, like, why don't you all make it like one Earth? And then, like, in the Arrowverse, they made it one Earth. And, like, the only, now the problem with that is you keep going. Why don't they show up? Why is, <laughs> well, why is Supergirl not there? Yeah. And that's, that's true, too, because I'm like, I don't watch all of the shows in the Arrowverse. I, I actually started with The Flash. Um, I and then I, I watched, watched this most recent season. I cannot actually, share Iris. I, I, I still need to watch the, the, new, the new season. Oh, do you? Because um, Iris yeah. West is insufferable. Yeah. And, then, and then I went into um, Supergirl, which... No. Yeah, um, I'm still... No. Yeah. So I've, I've actually never watched Arrow. But he's all the way through. Oh, I've seen like it. the first like half of first. Season. He does the. I mean, like every season is kind of the same. Where he like he's kind of like jacked, so his hands always look weird out of place, and he like apologizes to people. But like the problem with is Supergirl or Superman or any of these things is that they're so overpowered, <laughs> which makes them a lot of fun when they're a de- desex machina. Like and that that'll come into this like the uh, Snyder cut and they'll come into like like other things when Superman shows up and you're like yeah <laughs> you're like like he's Goku you know what I mean yeah. like he's like he's about to fuck shit up you know what I mean like that's like that's when Superman's fun mm. like when you actually watch Superman and he's like fighting crime you're like well that's fun for <laughs> or it's like Superman and then he's like fighting some intergalactical thing that could face him you're like. Well, that's weird. Like, I don't care, but this is not a relatable story. That's the... Like, listen, it's not Spider-Man facing some dude with a falcon wings. You know what I mean? Like, it's like... Well, that's why characters like uh, Mr. Mixed Pixel, like, are interesting, because they're... Who is that guy? Like, that's how you think. Yeah, You're like, who's like, Polka Dot guy? This tiny little dude that 
because he's magic, can fuck Superman up. Oh, that yeah. Way, like, magic messes. Yeah. I love that. The, well, that's the reason why they, you know, like, that's the, why, like the rocks are always like, the hierarchy's changed. Yeah, yeah because <clears throat> magic messes yeah. with Superman. That's why, like, I, I hate when people do the, oh, can Superman beat Goku? Oh, can Superman beat, no. uh, you know, Captain Marvel? It's like, why don't you do Superman versus fucking Scarlet Witch? You know why? Because Scarlet Witch will fuck his fucking life up. Yep. Because she has magic. And she's yeah. strong as fuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> she fucked with Thanos. Yeah. <laughs> Thanos was like, oh shit, send them. And you know what? Like I, I, I kind of said it one of my episodes. I might start a uh, Discord. But if you want to at me on um, my Instagram, feel free if you think that Superman can beat Scarlet Witch, because that's bullshit. But whatever. Well, we're gonna keep continuing on. Straight manager. Continue. <laughs> so, all right. Let's go ahead and segue then to the Snyder Cut and the Weeding Cut of in Inju- uh, Justice League. So, I uh, <laughs> this this episode has been a long time coming. As we said in the last episode, if you watched or listened, is um, Sam and I used to talk about the MCU a lot. The other thing that I used to bitch about a lot was Batman versus Superman. Like, this is a movie that defines my hatred for <laughs> some of the things that DC does for, like, no reason. So we're going to get into this. But basically, like, The way this started out is basically, you know, Warner Brothers knew that, you know, the MCU was just taking over. Like, they did so many things, so successful. So they were like, we're going to try to do the same things. You know, they bring in fucking Snyder and he does Man of Steel, which was a decent take on the Superman origin. Like, again, we know the fucking story, but fine. They did a little bit differently. It was okay. Uh, and then they follow up with fucking Batman <laughs> versus Superman, which was just such a piece of fucking shit movie that like had some awesome elements and then just really fucking terrible elements. Like the, why did you say that name? The fucking Martha moment just took me out of that movie so much. But I was like, you know what? I'll still ride with this. I want to see how this ends out. And Justice League is scheduled to come out. And apparently there was like a bunch of stuff that happened. Um, Snyder was doing this movie. He lost his daughter. He leaves. So they bring Joss Whedon in. Uh, Joss Whedon tried to take this movie more towards an MCU kind of view. He has like the quippy one-liners, unnecessary comedy, uh, like the flash landing on Wonder Woman's chest and like feeling awkward, Batman superpowers, he's being rich. Like there was just some stuff like that didn't they need to be that. done. It huh? They left that light. Did they? I don't remember that. I thought he said it was like, oh, he's like, I'm rich. No, nah, I think that was just in the original one. It it might have been the other one, but still, I, I think it was stupid. But like the weed and cut was it was serviceable. Yeah. It was okay. It, it did what it needed to do, but what the worst part of it is that it was it was broken and it took away from some of the continuity that like they were finally starting to build with like Man Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman. Um and just as a side note, although I don't completely believe in uh the dude who played Cyborg. Ray uh, Fisher. Ray Fisher, like I guess there was some, you know, fuckery going on in the background uh, with Joss Whedon. I know he has like a kind of history, but like whatever. I, I again, I just, I just don't believe Ray Fisher. Yes, I know, I'm black. I should, <laughs> I probably should, but I don't. Um, well, we'll leave that for another mini, mini episode. But whatever. Um, Snyder very publicly distanced himself from the movie. Claimed most of his vision wasn't there. You know, they took a lot of stuff out, which. Actually, I do believe in that. Like, I think that Warner Brothers was very scared of the the way that Batman versus Superman turned out with, like, again, we just talked about this, the dark kind of role that it took. Uh, They wanted it to be lighter. So I think once 
Snyder was gone, they were like, let's try to make this a little bit lighter, um, funnier, more towards the MCU. And that's why they brought in Whedon. It didn't work. Um, you know, fans demanded the hashtag Snyder cut, yep. uh, which for the most part seemed like a lost legend. I was just talking to Sam about this, like Reddit is probably way more powerful than um, people understand that they really are. Uh, Cause I'm pretty sure that hashtag was probably started on Reddit. Then probably went to Twitter. Um, it seemed like kind of a lost legend for a little bit. And then HBO max comes along and I think that's where Warner Brothers kind of saw an opportunity. They knew that they were failing and they decided to get this funded. Uh, they shot some scenes. They definitely was some new material oh, that I was put into there. Okay, <laughs> They're like, they, they, they made a whole new third act. Yeah, like, like, let's be honest. I know they said, so we did was like, you know, 80% of the movie was the same. Like, I, I don't know if I necessarily believe that. I do know he said that the technically the... <laughs> The Leto scene was finally filmed. Um, there were some scenes that were done uh, between Superman that he ended up before, but I'm pretty sure there's way more. By the way, that. he put the Leto in scene as in like, like uh, personally, I feel like he kept Leto as Joker as like kind of like a big like, yeah. <laughs> like, that was like his like, like unzipping moment like you like they like i always had leto as part of my universe it's like no you didn't sir <laughs> you chose leto because you knew everybody hated leto <laughs> and like that's my only theory on that one but yes like i agree i agree with that i haven't seen the way we didn't cut but i won't watch the center cut i went oh this is fine <laughs> and <laughs> i was like oh okay this is this is good so this is actually why I'm, I'm going to enjoy this episode a little bit. So I've seen both and I actually just rewatched um, the weed and cut. <laughs> so I've, I've watched about uh, 10 hours of these movies. Cause I, I, I tried to rewatch the stand cut again, but only got through about two hours of it. So um, again, my beer is called hindsight. Cause in hindsight, watching this much of Justice League was probably detrimental to my health. Oh, another but, um, fiend <laughs> beer? Wow. <laughs> so these are some of the things that I think worked, and we'll see if Sam agrees. So one thing that I definitely appreciated more in the CGI cut and um, uh, the Snyder cut, and I'm pretty sure most everybody did, is very first and foremost is the fucking Superman CGI look. Yeah, which is <laughs> hilarious because it reminded me of that Conan sketch where they used to have a picture of a person and he like just like have someone <laughs> super set their lips on it and talk. Like I, I, I again I've never seen it, but I've seen <sighs> so many like so many videos of it, you're like, wow, this is really so bad. Rewatching it, it it really is. It's terrible. Which mind you, it. Henry Cavill has come out and said, I would have shaved. <laughs> like that's the crazy thing. He was like, I like was not opposed to shaving. And wasn't this because of ghost protocol yes. or like and he was like, Yeah, I was in it and I had a mu- had to have mustache. Mm-hmm. And then the they were like, Oh, well. And he was like, No, I would have shaved it. Like I was on I was on board. Oh, it was just, it's just so dumb and it looks so bad. But that actually leads me into that's nitpicky shit. But yes, like when you like when you come into a movie and you see like something that dumb, you're like, wow, this is 180 <laughs> 80 million dollars. But so this is the thing, and this is why I feel like Josh Whedon made poor choices, especially to your point of where Henry Cavill was like, sure, I'll fucking shave, like I don't care. The beginning intro was so much better in the Snyder Cut than it was in the Whedon Cut. So the Whedon Cut has this beginning intro of Superman talking to, like, this little kid on his phone video, and he's like, I love your S. Does it really mean hope? And he's like, it's a winding river. Like, yeah, like, it's just so dumb. But you also see, like, yeah, like, you see him with the CGI beard. So, like, it just takes you out of the scene anyways so it was like that it's like when your kid's talking to santa yeah like he's like this kid's just like filming him on a phone but asking like the dumbest questions you would ask like your heroes like if i was talking to like the rock yeah i wouldn't ask dumbass questions like you wouldn't ask like like, does the rock mean you're really sturdy yeah (laughs) like it was just it was so stupid but the snyder cut starts off with superman dying with um doomsday 
Yeah. And as he dies, his scream wakens the mother boxes, which... I will say one thing. As I was watching just the Snyder Cut, mm. I watched that moment. I thought it was dumb. And that's what <laughs> I was going to say, because I, I know you've said this to me. Comparatively to a kid talking to a CGI mouth, <laughs> it might have been a better one. So <laughs> what makes this work better, in my eyes, not, you know, with you not having seen the original, is... This again starts to work towards the continuity front of what was being worked on. And this makes sense because there's a scene at the end of Batman where Superman, where Batman's talking to Lex Luthor in the jail and Lex Luthor goes, he's coming. He's heard. Like he's on his way. Dark side. And it's dark side. Like now it makes sense. Yeah. Batman. So, shit. Earth, Time out. You're talking about after credits actually pays off? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, Superman now awakens these fucking mother boxes. Darkseid and Steppenwolf have been, like, alerted to this. They're coming to Earth. Uh, Lex Luthor knows this because he was in the ship, like, seeing all these things kind of taking place and, like, what's going on. Yeah. Tells Batman. Batman's like, oh, shit. There's something coming. I need I have to, to develop get a these group people of together. People. Yes, like now it's starting to make sense, and that's why I'm like, oh, like why would he have even taken that shit out in the beginning? But whatever. Can I yeah. well, can I actually say something like about after credit scenes and all that shit? Yeah. The Russo brothers have come out, and they were talking about like at the end of Ultron, and Thanos goes, "Fine, I'll do it myself," mm-hmm. and grabs the Infinity Gauntlet, and they <laughs> they've come out. And they were like, I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> like, they were like, I don't know what it was. I don't know what was it about. Like, it, they, like they're like, what, what, like, continuity. They're like, nothing. Like, we couldn't <laughs> use it. It didn't make sense to us. Because it wasn't making sense to the storyline. <laughs> and that was the thing, like, with Josh Whedon, when he was like, oh, I don't want to. Like, the, and, like, I don't want to be, like, like, shit on him that much, because he didn't make great show, shows, and, like, he did make the Avengers of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but, like, the idea that, like, he was broken by the idea that there was so many restrictions in the Marvel Universe, <laughs> comparatively, which, it, like, and I don't want to be like that, but, like, I like the Russo brothers, because they believe, it seems like they believe in the continuity, <laughs> so they understand why they can't continue or move forward with a storyline they wanted to, because someone told them no, because yeah. that's coming somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like then you'll go, oh, okay, that makes sense. Like I just want to make sure that vision's coming somewhere. Like, or like, okay, I'll remove it so you guys can do it somewhere else. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> For him not to use something that someone already set up, which by the way is the dude who gave you the movie. Yeah. Which way can you t- re- can you tell me the relationship with Snyder and Whedon? There wasn't any. This oh, they just chose Whedon? They chose Whedon. I thought Snyder chose Whedon. No. I thought they were like friends. No. Oh, so they, they, they watched they watched his movie, yep. saw it was going to be more like Man of Steel, and didn't like it. Yep. Fuck it. Executive. So they had, they had already had a bunch of rewrites and reshoots with Snyder. I feel like they took this as an opportunity. They were like, all right, Snyder's gone. We're going to bring somebody in. He, he did a good job with the Avengers. Let's... Uh, have him fucking do this movie and it just didn't pan out the way that they wanted to. Of course, which, why not? which is a great fucking segue to one of the parts of the beginning of the movie, which is very heavily memed. And I wonder if it's true or not. I think it is. There's a scene where there's a homeless person holding a, or actually, it's like on the ground, it's a cardboard sign and it just says, I tried. And I still think that that is. Joss Whedon's little fucking hint that, like, I tried to do something good with this movie. I couldn't get it done. I tried. And that, of course, is gone from the Snyder Cut, so I do not think that that was ever supposed to be in there. That was definitely a Joss Whedon fucking thing. So you think Joss Whedon was like, sorry, I couldn't do much of this? (laughs) Which, by the way, is just... To be fair, like, you watch the Snyder Cut, I liked it way better. Yeah. So, like, what are you trying other than not doing what you were supposed to do, which was take what he wanted you to do and make the finish the fucking movie? So that's that's the thing. So, I mean, obviously I mean, like, what do you want them to do? Come in and say, like, 
hilarious stuff is like Batman high fives Barry Allen. <laughs> the funniest thing about like all the Justice Leagues is like Barry Allen comes in and he's knowing, annoying, <laughs> annoying as fuck. <laughs> and Batman's like, cool. And then disappears on him <laughs> every moment he can. Like he doesn't like anybody. <laughs> which which almost makes me hate the fact that Batman is the one putting them all together. <laughs> it was like he works alone. He hates that he has Nightwing. He keeps him because he's an orphan. He wants to keep him. And then he once he gets uppity, he can't stand it. And then he has Jason Todd. His most upsetting version of like what happened. <laughs> Why? Because he was murdered on him. Like, and it was like, oh shit, I did that. And then he has Tim Drake, who, by the way, no one really cares about. And then he has Damian Wayans, oh, most developed character ever. Are you kidding me? Yeah. No, Damian Wayans is his son from he is when... a legitimate son. Because it's from um, who's the girl from the League of Shadows that he like? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Talia. Yeah, you like. Gets that going. <laughs> so his grandfather is Raja Ghul and his father is uh, Batman. So he he's a 13-year-old who really loves killing. Uh, so then Batman's like, hey, that's not cool. Uh, that's why in Justice, when he like he like he's super sad that Dick Grayson died because he like killed him. And he looked at him, he's like, I thought I could change you, and like walked off on him. And you're like, oh <laughs> damn, you know Dick Grayson was his real son, son. Uh, but anyways, but um and then, like, that chick one, I forget who she is. But she was in uh, Batman Returns. was a sweet movie that you Becker? have not watched yet. What? Becker? No. Um, in Batman Returns, there's like a Batman Returns um, movie, like The Return of the Bat, or The Return of the Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. Remember I keep telling you this part one and part two you have to watch? It's like an animation? Yeah. Oh. He's like 90 years old. He shows <laughs> back up. Um, who's female... Robin. Carrie Kelly. She shows up and he's like, he's like, yeah, you can hang out on the ship. <laughs> like, like, and Batman's like, cool at this moment. He's like, I'm old. Let you up. That storyline's cool. We'll get into it later. But no, like with all that, where was I going with this? Oh, he doesn't know. Batman doesn't like work in a group. So like the idea he's like gotta show up, and, like, we gotta get this going is like stupid. That's it would have been better if almost Barry Allen was the one recruiting everybody. I love the meme where it's like, you know that Batman is fronting all this money because he's making these people who can fly in a plane. <laughs> They're showing up. Like, uh, it's slow. I got money. But no, like, that's the thing. So, okay, so in, in his mind, it's like he as the most world blah, 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 detective, the smartest guy around, blah, blah, blah. He knows he's got to put together a group. Which, by the way, I don't know why his first move was to get the guy who, like, talks to fish. Well. No, tell me so why. I, the first guy is you talk to the guy. Does he, no one has seen him control water. <laughs> Does he I control know. water? <clears throat> Does Aquaman control water? He does. Okay. I don't know if he controls water or if his so trident wife? does. Ah, but, the one that uh, he doesn't have yet, technically, yeah. from because... So, which, by the way, he has in the movies, but at the same time, we haven't. So is Justice League after Aquaman? Okay, you actually bring up a very good point because as I was doing research for this episode, I was trying to figure that out from a Snyder cut perspective because I think... He's rocking that tried it in the gold I suit. I think in a Snyder Cut perspective, that technically was supposed to come out before Aquaman. So the, the continuity was supposed to be brought into, into Aquaman. So and I, I say it for this reason. I'll jump ahead a little bit. Yep. So I actually I actually liked the Aquaman intro in the Snyder Cut. Oh, yeah, a yeah. little bit better than I did the Whedon cut, except for one thing. You didn't like the Himmel, uh, you that didn't like the weird fucking song? chance thing at the end was just like super fucking awkward. You didn't like that they sniffed his sweater and then sang a chant of no, the sea? No, that was just like, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm done with that. You don't like magic, my friend. But um, I did enjoy that they kind of like Batman like, <clears throat> but, like what's happening? <laughs> yeah, like that's why I liked it in Sataka because it was like again that detective like he already knew what was going on. He's like, dude, I know yeah. who you are, man. <laughs> Which was great because then 
The best thing about Mad Men is not that he goes around kicking ass, everything like that, mm-hmm. is that every time you say something to him, he's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, and you're like, <laughs> oh, he's yeah, like, right, you're fucking so smart, dude. He's like, I can't go anywhere until we talk. Looking at you, Arthur fucking Curry. He's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Listen, you fish gill bitch, I need to talk to you. Like, you're like, oh. Yeah, because it's not like he's like stumbling upon yeah. people. Like, that's that's the thing with Batman is that always the greatest. It's like, he always knows. Yeah. And that's what makes him fun. Mm. And it's like, oh, dude, the idea, I forget what, what I watched. I think it was in Justice. <laughs> yeah, it was in Justice, that movie where it like, the first time he met Cyborg, he put a virus in him. <laughs> You're like, yeah, dude, this guy's the best. That whole Doom at like whole like Justice League Doom. Mm-hmm. You ever hear of it? Yeah. Best movie ever. <laughs> Literally, the reason why they defeated all the superheroes for a little while was because they tapped into like basically Batman's journal. <laughs> You're like, uh, this is the greatest. <laughs> And they're like, ah, oh, yes, um, Wonder Woman won't stop fighting, so if you give her a hallucinogenic, she'll always think it's Cheetah and will fuck her, try to fuck her up until she dies. Um, Cyborg, like, I forget, like, I forget what was Cyborg's, but Cyborg stuff like, like, you gotta use a kryptonite bullet on Superman. And then it was just like, all these, like, oh, Hal Jordan will always, like, regret his first decision, or like his first misstep as, like, a hero. So if you constantly remind him of his psychological trauma, <laughs> he'll win. You're like, oh, dude, are you serious? Yeah. He's like, and he like, and they're like, the fact that you don't trust us is crazy. And he's like, the fact you trust me is yeah. nice. And you're like, dude, Batman, you're the man. Like, that's what makes Batman. The fact that Batman is like, I can't believe you trust me. And that's what makes you crazy. And you're like, yep. That's that's the Batman I like. That's the Batman I love. Don't be friends with anybody. They be are their their work associates. And I will say that. Like that's why I feel like that caveat is always put out. If Batman has time, oh, who wins in a fight? It's like it's always Batman, dude. That Dark Knight, <laughs> that Dark Knight movie, where like when it like he faces Superman, mm. he wins. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Because he used to be in prep time. Yeah, in prep time, he had, a, uh, he had a sweet Superman like yep. fighting suit, which by the way, they stole for Batman versus Superman. <laughs> and then, you know who he used? Green Arrow, who's <laughs> super pissed at him with a fucking kryptonite arrow. Like, oh, I'll fucking mess you up, dude. Like, you're the man. <laughs> he taunted him. He said, Come here, fucking Boy Scout. Let's go. <laughs> Do you believe? Um, which I will say, that's, that's what I talk about. Like, cool shit out of that fucking movie. And then they ruin it with a fucking Martha. Anyways, um, Batman vs. Superman is a cool movie because it did it did Batman justice. Yeah. Because, like, Ben Affleck's not a bad Batman. All right, thank you. Um, Ben Affleck, I don't care. Again, come at me on my Instagram or wherever. Ben Affleck is the best Bruce Wayne and Batman out of everybody. Yeah. Playboy billionaire with a shitty smirk and smile, Ben Affleck. And when he's fucking Batman, you're like, this guy's kind of yeah. badass. Like, I'm kind of pissed that the fucking WB like ran him out of wanting to be Batman anymore. Yeah, because they don't know what they're doing with their own storylines. Yeah. Like, he's like, I have a really cool story for the Batman. They're like, do you? <laughs> Like that's stupid. He's like, all right, I gotta go. I'm gonna go back to rehab. <laughs> like, what happened? He's like, I don't know. I, I can't do this. But um, but anyways, bring us back. So, <clears throat> and so we, Snyder we, shows up and we like, went quite a, off a table. Yeah, but like then Snyder shows up and is like, this is part of the yeah. Snyder cut. Snyder shows up and is like, hey man, do you want to do a couple scenes that like update my movie? And he's like, yes, yes. <laughs> I'll fucking extra after credit. <laughs> the fuck out of this movie. Like, you're like, shit, okay. But no, the reason I say that Aquaman was after this was supposed to be is because Willem Dafoe's character shows up and talks to Arthur, well, Aquaman, and he's like, take your mother's trident. Like, mm-hmm. you're supposed to be the king, and that is right, the right, beginning right, 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 of right, right, right. Aquaman. 
But what trident is he rocking then? He still has his mom's. So he takes it. I thought his mom's trident was with that dude. I have not seen Aquaman. I will it's, admittedly so. It was again who, who's serviceable? Who is who's Egerton's got? Conjuring fuck. Oh, he is. Um, well, yeah, but well, like what? What? Like what? He's like his brother. Rocking? Yeah, I know he's his brother, but is he? Yeah. Who's rocking? Like his thing is, his, uh, he's is like King Atlantis's dad, yeah. was his old trident. So he has his mom's trident, but he has to go get his dad's trident. Yeah. So you got a double trident. Yeah. Well, his dad's probably more powerful. Yeah. So that's a key. I mean, it was soon. Like, he <laughs> really nice, but like, then why does he have to take like one trident over the other? Like, take mom's trident. Like, so is, why don't I get take dad's trident? Not the one that's more powerful. Yeah, his brother has it. Uh, oh, but you need one trident to yeah. defeat the other. Mm-hmm. One trident to roll them all. You, you do you combine them? It's like winning it in combat. Oh, so it's like their dark it's saber. Like dark saber. Ah, got it. <laughs> and uh, is Amber Heard in this scenario British or not? She's still a fucking what? Man, man, man. Man. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Anyways, that's a whole other episode, folks. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like, like that's the thing with me is like Aquaman. I guess Aquaman was less like broy, which in this version I heard. Yes, so um, like they they made Aquaman like yeah, dog. This is how we roll. Like, there's one part in the leading cut that like makes me cringe so bad. So, um, and I, I'm I'm fairly certain it's not in the Snyder cut. Correct me if I'm wrong. I again I haven't watched. The Snyder Cut in a while, I only got to see half of it as I was trying to refresh for this, this episode. But in the Whedon Cut, uh, Aquaman is like trying to fucking destroy one of the parademons. Um, Cyborg like saves him and he's like, Mama! Yeah, yeah. And then like, Mama. he like surfs on a fucking parademon down to the ground, hits the ground and like, Flips his hair back and starts walking. And I'm like, oh, it is, it's so fucking terrible. Which, by the way, I don't know because I like Jason Momoa. So is that like, I do, like, is he still, still like, rocking it? Like, is he still cool? Like, it's still so brewery. Now, was it orange or was it blue? Which one was the blue one? Oh, no, because Snyder wanted to be like, Snyder no. has a black and white yeah. version. Which, by the way, Snyder was the. Can dark. I ask her a question? Why? Why shouldn't it be dark, though? No, no, no. I'm fine with dark. Why we gotta be like Snyder Cut, Snyder, black and white version. <laughs> like, why? Oh, by the way, we have not talked about how, like, Wonder Woman definitely killed a bunch of people at the beginning of this movie. Oh, absolutely. Oh, so we show, by the way, <laughs> the one, I did not like this scene. I thought it was a very poor depiction of, like, how she is as, like, a superhero. <laughs> not based off, like, her abilities, <laughs> But basing off like the idea of like how you portrayed her abilities, you're like, oh, so like is... we went slow, which was like cool, man. We we get it. You did 300. Like <laughs> fucking stop slowing things down. So this, and then she's going too fast, and you're this like, this is my, ah. and this is kind of why I wish you saw the original. This is again my take on why this worked slightly better than now, the Whedon version. No, but here's the thing: I'm the guy who watched one version, so <laughs> yeah. I don't get to go. Well, that was a little better than the Whedon yeah. version. I get to go. That was still shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, actually, no. I, I I actually switched that around. I actually liked the Whedon version a little bit better. Did than they the sh- version? Did they show her because doing it better? No. Yeah. They cut it off at a certain part, and this is this is where they cut off. So Snyder cut set it up way better than the Whedon did because you actually like. Get a sense of why they're terrorists, what they're trying to do, why they're there, like why they have the the, the hostages. They're basically just distracting the police, and so they can like do this thing and like fuck shit up. Yep. Wonder Woman comes in. She still does the whole fucking um, whatever thing. The lasso. She gets to know like what they're doing. The one part that I will say about um, Snyder that I liked, and and I know you said you don't like this. They're, they are showing her speed a little bit where Whedon just like goes right into it. And it's like, what is she doing with the... But it's like, so in the... Snyder okay, cut, so if you just slow down and show that she's like super fast, I'm cool with that. But like, okay, fair. Do it to a point where I'm not bored by it. 
But like, like I'm not this isn't Max Payne. This is not fucking <laughs> Matrix. I don't need you to slow down ever. I mean, you slow down for one, and then you can, and then you go, and then now she's so fast that I can't see her. I'm cool when she's so fast that I can still see her, and it makes me weird. Like ah, this is awkward. That's what I didn't like. She's like, <laughs> you're like, what is happening? So they do do that in both. You fucking <laughs> fast. <laughs> but the one thing that I liked about the Whedon version. As opposed to Snyder Cut. She so at, her 75 at, people? at the fucking very end, she does the fucking Superwoman um, bracelet fucking clink and explodes like the building when she was trying to save this from an explosion. Why? Why do that much damage in well, the first she, place? She, she saved a little precocious child. <laughs> Did she? I mean, she. <laughs> Did she save a progressive child and not create tons of fucking like, property damage? Oh, is, is it his building? Like, does he have to inherit that debt? Like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> now, you're talking about Whedon. He did it, like, in Whedon's version, she didn't it destroy she, a fucking building. She Which, does, by the way, we've, does talked the... about, we've talked about this before. <laughs> DC has no regard to the property damage that's going to come. <laughs> like, no superheroes to. Marvel sometimes takes them away. Do they? Though? I don't know. I mean, we have the the only like, time is it like we have the damage control people. Tech, tech they control. will take them away unless <clears throat> it's a third world country. <laughs> <laughs> like they did sector off New York. Um, they destroyed the fuck out of that African country when you spent the whole. <laughs> um, there's no such thing as Sokovia anymore. God, no such thing. Which I don't know what's their fault. <laughs> Which, by the I'm going to get right into that. Why are we blaming the superheroes for that when it was, well, technically, uh, every, like, Ultron was Tony's. Anyways, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. But uh, no, but like, so Weed versus Snyder, like, as Snyder, I liked it. Like, I thought four hours was a little much. I thought I understood, like, why you wanted to go two <clears throat> parts, but then at the same time. Well, no, like, they were going to do the episodic. The thing and show, just do the HBO Max show I, again. I think that was fucking Warner Brothers because clearly, could you imagine a bad show? Oh, clearly, cool. you can see it was supposed to be episodes, yeah, because it's broken up into six chapters, yeah, in the movie. So, well, I think he was doing himself a favor that way. Mm-hmm. I think this was definitely after the fact, like, oh, absolutely, he was like, just so you know, this is this is a chapter three. Yeah. And you're like, well, because that, that was part of the we didn't change over, it was supposed to be that long, but they didn't want it to be that long. Well, they like, so they were like, hey, can you fucking cut this down? And we was like, oh, absolutely, and he did it for fucking two hours. <laughs> I mean. Let's be f- like, yeah, let's be fair. Do you want to sort of like if I wasn't at my house, there's nowhere I'm going to go see a four hour Justice League movie. Mm. I want you to look at my eyes. I've seen the Justice League movie and it literally is an hour and 15 minutes. I've seen but it. Before, no, no, no. I've seen it. Or the original. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. It's an hour and 15 minutes. It's called Justice League. Oh, uh, like the anime. War. And uh, you go. Cool. Like you're like, but like, like you did it. <laughs> if if you're a fan of these, I am. Would you not sit down for an hour fifteen minutes? You sat down for a three hour end game movie. Yep. Yeah. Because you gave me eleven years to build the three hours. <laughs> you said everything else was like this is all fun, and then it was like this is three hours. You've given eleven year, year, years <laughs> of your life to the story, and you go fine, do it, <laughs> and. You broke it up into three different segments, which made it fun. This is sad. Time heist. <laughs> After time heist. Cool. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I'll take that. All right. So what else do we got? So there you go. We talked about Arthur. We talked about uh, Wonder Woman. The mother boxes. <clears throat> so we kind of touched on this a little bit. And I, I think we'll get into fucking stuff a little bit. But like mother. what what I liked about the mother boxes and this one is like I said, the, the Superman kind of awakened them. Like it just seems like there's there's more of a reason. Now I understand that, them. but why? Why did Superman awake them? 
waking them. It was just the they've been asleep for so because that that. But was why is Superman awaken them with their his? Because it's it's Superman. He's a Kryptonian. He's strong. No, no one else would do something like this. They've they just went into a deep sleep that nothing was awakening them, and now something now, that me, powerful as Superman. You liked the answer, mm-hmm. and you liked the idea that oh, Lex Luthor's. And then he's coming because he's heard. And you're like, cool, that's paid off. For me, that's dumb. <laughs> but why is it? But why is it dumb? It's dumb because why is Superman scream waking mother boxes? What else? He's been there? chilling on this world. Like you don't think he like screamed before? Screamed and dying? You don't think he's got his ass kicked before? He's like, ow! Not that bad. Hey, well, the house. Uh, like, how how much do you scream when you so, die? Okay. If you stubbed your toe, uh-huh. ah! would you scream as loud as being shot in the fucking chest? He was stabbed. Wasn't he stabbed? I'm, the, I'm just saying, stubbing your toe uh-huh. to being shot in the chest. Yeah, was it shot in the chest? Where in the chest was shot? In the chest, like right my we'll my say heart? At your heart. Right my heart. Yeah. What's a shot? Can't scream. Dead. No. Nope, bleed out. Nope. That, was it Kryptonian? Nope, you're Kryptonian. You're being shot in your fucking chest. Okay, was it a Kryptonian bullet? Sure. Then I'm dead. You, you st- shot me in the heart! He got a, I can't say shit with my blood's he got gone. A, he got a One crypt- second. He got a Kryptonite spear to the heart. You hit the A, right? He got a Kryptonite spear. Ah! Yeah, damn it! <laughs> dying! And Mother Box was like, shit, that sounds like no, Kryptonian it's, dying it's, on it's, Earth. It's a way more powerful screen. That's all I'm going to say. It doesn't make way so, more sense. Well, then give me, give me, give me backstory where Superman scream is a superpower of his. It's not a superpower. It's just no, this no. Is time real. out. It's not You're, if you oh. can, actually, you can, I will say it probably is a superpower of his. Google it right now. He goes oh, and he's got screech. Uh, we will look this up. Don't you, don't you, don't you burp in my face? <laughs> don't you burp in my face like you're right. If Superman has a sonic power, I'll give this to you. Because it showed residence. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, actually, they have a whole. Uh, why is Superman Scream wakes up the mother boxes? Oh, cool. Let's Google it. What's this? <laughs> Ramp Screw it? No, it really is. No, you <laughs> Read it. All right. In Zack Snyder's Justice League, the Scream Superman emits when he's killed by Doomsday is a trigger that awakens the three mother boxes. Got it. How this works ties into Zack Snyder's mythical approach towards Superman. Don't like it. Dark Side you tell me it's in the villains from Apocalypse and the Sonic. Yep. Superman laid down his life to stop Doomsday. Got it. As the Man of Steel plunged the Kryptonite spear into Doomsday, the Kryptonian monster drove his spiked hand into Superman's heart. Zack Snyder's Justice League opens up on this pivotal moment, adding the powerful scream from the Superman in his death throats. The uh-huh. sonic boom of Superman's anguish reverberated <laughs> across the entire planet, but the most significant after effects was the mother boxes hearing the Superman scream. From their location in Atlantis, their Mercera, and Cyborg's apartment, the three change engines woke up from down the sea dormancy, signaling to their master that Earth was safe to invade. So that is why. Yeah, so is this Zack Snyder thing you tell me? Still, continuity. Still works. Fine. But I still think it was tough. <laughs> By the way, Stephanie Brown but is also a female. That's fine. It, it may be dumb from someone who didn't watch both. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. From me, I was like, this is yeah. stupid. <laughs> Yours was a payoff. You're like, oh, this makes way more sense why those mother boxes yes. Which I can agree with because I heard Steppenwolf came in and was like, hey, man, the mother boxes. So, and it got yeah, real weird. That's the thing. Like, Steppenwolf just like, comes here. In. So, although I, I kind of liked it originally when I first saw it. So, uh, Batman comes in and he's like, oh, the parademons smell fear. And he like uses this random fucking gangster to like, find a parademon and then like all of a sudden steppenwolf is just like finding these mother boxes so fucking easy like it just doesn't make sense but then you have like okay these things awoke it's signaled to them they're like all right let's go back to earth let's try to find them but like steppenwolf is actually having trouble Finding the other boxes. Like, yeah. He needs the parademons to get the scent from people who have been in contact no. with the mother boxes. No, that's Snyder's, right? Is yes. that like instead of him them smelling fear, 
They smell mother bugs. Yes. So the, he uses the bear demons to find mother bugs. Yes. If they're awake, he can then smell the mother yeah. bugs. Which I was actually just reading, and they were like, the reason why it all worked and was way better, why Stephen, uh, Stephen, Wolf, Stephen Wolf was way better in this one rather than the other one, was because it seemed like a dude at work yes. who, <laughs> who really just wanted to get in contact with the boss and yeah. he wouldn't talk to him. <laughs> and like, it was really hard. Yeah. Like, like, you so like, like, yeah. so you almost like, relate with them. You're like, it's like, like every like, single time he's hey, like, hey, man, I'm really trying. I'm doing pretty good right now. Like, hey, can you, can you tell can the you boss I'm doing good? And he's like, no. Yeah, uh, keep keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, once then, uh, once you get all the mother boxes yeah. and you do all the stuff, we can talk. And he's like, "But I uh, just like let him know, yeah. like I'm doing that." <laughs> Which, by the way, was also kind of bad because at the same time we got like four or five different scenes of him just saying, "Like, hey man, <laughs> what's up?" Yeah, but look at the mother boxes like, still. And you're like, cool, Steppenwolf was probably one of the worst villains, and they see the him. Cut. They CGI'd him up. Although they just add him like they were like so, he got leveled. <laughs> in 2017 in the waiting <laughs> cut he had like level 14 armor yeah. <laughs> and then in like 2031 he was like here's here's I, level 30 i actually like, like the shit. look i like the look of whedon steppenwolf you like whedon's better the attitude of Steppenwolf. cut steppenwolf i don't know I, the the like spiked armor was kind of weird for me but he seemed like he had he was like disgraced he was trying to win back the favor of Dark Side. Like he knew he fucked up. He he wanted to be back in like the good graces of him. So he's trying to like get this world and he found the anti-life equation. And like that just made so much more sense as like a, a, a motivation. Yeah. As opposed to him like in the weeding cut, he was coming down to earth to turn into a hellish landscape and yeah. The weird, like, mother, please help me find the... Like, oh, I hated that so much. What, mama? Like, like the weird... Mama! The weird, Ooh. creepy mother thing. It was just so stupid. But, I mean, like, look at this photo of the difference. He did. He got level 30 armor. Yeah. That thing is definitely plus 50. <laughs> like, but the like Snyder, Snyder Cut Steppenwolf was definitely way... Well, I will say this about the Snyder Cut Steppenwolf. He actually looked a lot more like Steppenwolf, uh, Dark Side. They were because they're supposed to be family, so they actually looked more like each other than the Whedon version did. Which Whedon just like completely kind of got rid of the concept of Dark Side, except for I think like one. Yeah, they said like Dark Side um, was it like I guess Dark Side was even like mentioned of it. Or, like, he was mentioned like once, but it was like hinted at. Yeah. like but it was like <laughs> no, like he's so, a main and that, reason. That brings me to the, the so like, everyone's like, who the fuck stepping with? Yeah, and why is he here if it's not for Dark Side? Yeah. And they're like, like they just gave a big smile and said fuck yeah. you. And like, so that, yeah. that brings me to the war. The war was done way better. In Steppenwolf. Oh, oh sorry, no. Snyder Cut, because... So, in the Weeding Cut, they do it, like, super early, and it's, like, they do exposition, and it's, like, the War of the Men, the Atlanteans, yep. uh, the Amazonians, and, like, they pretty... I think they pretty much say, like, the Green Lanterns. And... The Atlanteans it's, it's more of like the gods, right? No, it's, like, the little Atlanteans, so, like, no, 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 I'm sorry. So uh, the Amazonians, were there the Greek gods involved or no? Amazonians are like just the women. And then it's, oh, I'm sorry, they, I think they see the old gods or something like that. Because I'm saying like, so like they, Snyder, they brought the gods yeah, in. So they, they show, um, you know, a brief snippet of like a green lantern who gets fucking murked. The green fucking lantern goes off in space. Yeah. Um, they show, you know, the Atlanteans, they show the, the Amazonians. Um, and then they show Zeus like real fucking quick. Now the Snyder cut like fleshes the shit out. Like, so Wonder Woman like does this whole fucking like Lara Croft Tomb Raider thing, like sees all the shit fucking drawn on the wall. Um, she gets the whole backstory and tells Bruce Wayne. But like her story is like way better. You know, you see the, the Atlanteans. The old gods, and but it's Zeus and it's fucking Ares. Yeah, Ares is brought back from the Wonder Woman movie, and so, and then you have the Green Lanterns, who she says are, uh, you know, people from the stars 
the humans, um, the Amazonians before they were enslaved and betrayed. And like this whole war like happens out. Zeus is just like zapping fucking everybody. And then it's like you see fucking Ares come down with his fucking axe. He hits Doomsday because oh, I'm sorry, not Doomsday, uh, Dark Side, because Dark Side is the one that comes down, not um Steppenwolf, like yep. the Whedon version. But like it makes sense because he's looking for these mother boxes and he he's the one who comes down, he's trying to do it himself. Um but he gets, you know, sent back by all these people. And it's bloody. It's like, it's mad cool. But it's like, again, the continuity. Ares, who we've seen in these movies, he's the son of Zeus. They're working together, which I guess was supposed to be in another Zack Snyder movie. We'll see if they end up doing that at some point. But, but again, it's, it's one of those things that they did way better. Um, it's not good. Wait, Snyder's going to do Greek gods? Well, whenever uh, Dark Side comes back, there's supposed to be another uh, war that happens where they may come back. I mean, Snyder's like, please, <coughs> I've given you three different opportunities to let me come back with the Snyder cut. So now the Flash. This is where this is where I'm torn. Here's oh, can I can I go ahead? I hate him so much. <laughs> I think he sucks. I don't like Ezra Mill that much. I like I don't know why. I just don't like him. No, maybe I, that's what I'm supposed to feel with Barry Allen. <laughs> no, and I maybe it's because I, I really like the Barry Allen from the Arrowverse. I think they did a good job with him. For a season, he's great. <laughs> and then he got fucking like, oh, but Iris, and then, I don't know if I'm gonna do it. Like, yeah, shut up. But even even with that being said, I, I You're think fast there's, there's still, shut up. There's still an arc yes. going on with him. You know him. You're good with him. Yeah, and they yeah. bring in this like super awkward, weird guy. I I think I actually like the weed inverse Barry Allen better than the Snyder cut because like. That whole scene with him, like, trying to apply for a dog walker position and, like, saving Iris was just, like, way too much. Whereas, like, the weed and cut, he comes in, like, Batman sitting in his room. He's like, I know who you are, but I'm going to just see if you tell me I have who a you are. Wait, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. <laughs> Did Civil War come out before Justice League? I think it did. So did Whedon steal the Tony Stark in the bedroom Spider-Man? of Spider-Man? Oh, probably. Okay, just wondering. The, so I know we kind of talked about this a little bit with the uh, shenanigans that were going on with Josh Whedon, but Ray Fisher literally says that there was stuff that I copied and pasted from Whedon being in the MCU. So I, I can definitely see that. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if, if Batman's coming in as a rich mentor <laughs> to a young superhero in his bedroom is like, hey, man, I kind of know what you are. <laughs> like, that is legit Tony Stark. Yeah. Of but again, you liked it better. That's probably, which, that's which, probably, yeah, probably. Why I, I like to be like, like, hey, better. man, MCU, like <laughs> the nice little MCU style, which, but again, speaks to the volume of, I'm Batman. I know who the fuck you are. Yeah. Because I know who the fuck you are. Because I'm a detective. I've already do the I've deduced he, everything. Yeah, I, I, by the way, I did not watch Batman vs. Superman. Did he know Clark Kent was Superman right away? Uh, not right away, but he did get it. Like, was it well done? Or? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Again, hence why I heard Batman vs. Superman. He was really <laughs> good Batman. But no, I did not like the Flash introduction either. I did not like the Flash introduction. I thought I hated that he gave it as a, <laughs> yeah. and then he like he was like, oh, oh, I guess I'll eat a hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, which by the way, again, this is the third time you use a speedster. <laughs> which by the way, Quicksilver did it. <laughs> Sonic did it. And Sonic's adorable. I just pretty well for me. And then Ezra Miller did the like, ha, ah, look at me, he's all faster than I guess I'll hold you here. And the look, do you want to get the dog to jump? So it's like, I hate your fucking face. Yeah. You put your, like, st- and by the way, you put your stupid fucking flash outfit away because <laughs> I don't like this weird speed walking suit you got. Because yeah. that pointy ass helmet, mm. stupid. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine with them being awkward, but like awkward and weird. It's just so like what you are like I honestly like and I didn't want to be like rude about it. like like 
I was like, so is the Flash supposed to be kind of autistic? That's what I kind of yeah. I was like, like are yeah. you on this? Like, uh, like he kind of comes <laughs> off long, like he's yeah. like on the spectrum. I'm like, and the Flash in a lot of the connotations is an arrogant, like fun loving <laughs> asshole. Yeah. That's what he's supposed to be like. He gets powers. He's a little awkward, but the same thing. He's a science blah blah blah. But at the same time, he's like. He's cocky. He's always hitting on Wonder Woman. <laughs> like, that's what I want to see. Like, be fucking fun. <laughs> be single. Like, why do we always, like, why do we have to introduce Iris West immediately? Because <laughs> oh. Iris West. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, Cyborg. Right. I will say, I think I did enjoy the. Booyah. Uh, that was Whedon. <laughs> Apparently, they, they didn't have too good of a relationship. But um, I did like the fleshed out storyline of Cyborg, yeah. just because he was like the he was pretty much the heart of the story. Like he should be why things progressed, like why they were happening. He hid the mother box. He was like like you understood why he was so opposed to like the change that happened to him more with his father, but like. It also gave his father more reason to try to redeem himself. They did a good job. Like, I heard in the uh, weeding cut to the standard cut, like, they really didn't explain his father. No, not at all. And, like, it was just, like, are we, like, and which is, again, one of those things where I'm like, well, they don't treat you like you're dumb. Yeah. But at the same time, you gotta be like, well, it's, it's like, like we're dumb. Yeah, like, like, yeah. like, 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 maybe <laughs> just, like, I which, just, just kind of, like, make it like, oh, make it like a, just one person say something. Just <laughs> have one of your characters say something. Just like one of those things you're like, that's not what someone would really yeah. say. But at the same time, you're like, I get what. But you it's said like, it. so it's funny that you say that. So I'm watching the the weeding cut yesterday, and it's it's super fucking subtle. So Silas Stone comes out of his um, laboratory, and he sees the janitor, and the janitor's like, oh, it's 11:30. This is a, a early night for you, and he's like, yeah. I'm going to go home. And he's like, hey, I never meant to say to you, sorry about your son. And he's like, all right. And he just leaves. I watched the Snyder cut. Same scene. He says nothing about his son. So it was like, they literally tried to wrap up the entire exposition. Yeah, sorry about your son. Of his son in the Whedon verse by being like, sorry, you can say anything but your son. Whereas, like, the Snatica was like, oh, do you want to know why? Like, yeah, like, don't worry, I have a 30 minute story about yeah. five. Do you, do you want the one line? It's a sorry about your son where you don't determine any of his powers or what he has happened or what he was before this moment. Which, like, definitely, like, makes me see, like, like you know, Ray Fisher may have, like, but, like, if he was so terrible on set, <laughs> yeah. there's a reason why you were edited the fuck out. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, you know what? I don't like you. Yeah, like, because that's the thing. He's like, boo yeah. He's like, I didn't like Seriously, that. like, okay. You have, you have an entire four-hour movie, right? Yeah. This, I'm pretty sure, of all the stuff that was added, this wasn't one of them. Because Snyder even came out and was like, oh, Cyborg is like my, like, he's my movie. Well, no, no, no. So, if you think about it, like, from the first, second, and third, like, mm-hmm. listen, I thought there was a little too much cyborg. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really care too much about you. Like, I understood. But that's because in the third act, he's literally the catalyst of their, like, yeah. change. He's the reason why they win. Mm-hmm. Like, he, like I, I haven't watched it in a long time, but, like, he connects with the mother box. Mm-hmm. Like, it essentially, like, didn't that, like, essentially somehow call Superman back in life? Like, there was a lot of things that, like, what he, like, what he did was, like, the next step. Like, was, like, one of, like, was that, was that the Superman? So that was the, in the weeding cut. No, 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 but, like, did he, like, when he got in the mother like, did he somehow wake up Superman? Yes. No. Okay, well, he was in the mo- mother box, he was, like... That's when he like he shut down. Oh, he shut down the boom tubes. Yeah, right? because like they were gonna bring more in. Yeah. And he shut that down and then he shut down all the mother. Yeah, because he got to actually like interface with the unity. Well, because like the mother box is what created yeah. Cyborg. Was it the mother box or the father box? The mother box. Okay, because there's actually a father box thing too. Yes, because like I think it's some and, or some different connotations. Father box that created. Yeah, I think we actually talked about this before because I was like, hey, it looks fun. Yeah, that's Young Justice, I think. 
I was like, oh, and it's because it's so he he can create boom tubes. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And then you know, like, listen, Young Justice brought up that Randy kid, and I was like, man, this fucking crazy. Which, by the way, it's Snyder Cut behind Dark Side, the granny. Yeah. You're like, oh shit, that's a fucking old lady with an axe. <laughs> Loving it. But anyways, but you can tell like that Ray Fisher and and Ray Fisher and uh, what is it called is definitely. Do they just hang out in your room? Yeah. Okay, so we're, so we're, <laughs> we're talking about my kids. They just, <laughs> they just hang out in my room. <laughs> so they're on their own, right? <laughs> but Ray Fisher and like the idea that like the, like in center guy, like he's the reason why yes. they stopped her. Dark side, which by the way was then removed. All mentioned and all things of Dark Side are removed mm-hmm. from the Whedon version, meaning they took away all the reason for Cyborg to be there. Yeah. So like that's that's what I'm saying. Like you clearly had all of this happening that is a very specific choice to remove all of that so like something had to have happened you hated that. the kid and that's again i'm sure this might be a future episode but that's my whole john boyega angle as well like there's something that happens where you guys had creative fucking differences and like you got scrapped wait so, tell me you think john boyega got scrapped in the star oh, wars series because he's gonna Absolutely. Like he thought he would be a little bit more than mm-hmm. he was. Absolutely. Can I be honest? Mm-hmm. He should have. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, why is he wielding a lightsaber? And he's fighting Gala and what's happening like, here? You clearly and then he said nothing. You clearly could see there was supposed to be some sort of arc there where he was either force sensitive, mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. he could mm-hmm. wield these fucking You're not supposed saber. to be able to oh, you know by yeah. the way. Because they just said the dark saber. Exactly. It's too heavy. Yep. <laughs> but you're rocking a lightsaber. Yep. And then they were just like, you know what? Nah. We're not gonna go this way because he's being a fucking dick. <laughs> can I can I ask me as well? Mm-hmm. If we're gonna go to the Soap Star Room, do you know why it's more successful now? Uh, Disney bought it, like we knew that. <laughs> but at the same time, then they were like, "Oh shit, we should probably get someone to oversee this." <laughs> and it's Kevin Feig now. And they were like, "John, John Favreau, <laughs> you're running this shit now. <laughs> like, you, like you run everything in this universe." <laughs> and we all go, "This is a lot more enjoyable." Yeah. <laughs> but no, like, like I, I understand, really like because Cyborg was an integral part yeah. of Cyborg. Integral. Little too much storyline. But I get it. But he was wicked integral. But it's like, so that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run past this one real quick. No worries. So this was my, um, my thing where I, I think I liked the cyborg line where he was a little bit more integral to the party because Say booyah. Not the. Actually, you know what? I like the, I like the booyah thing because it's like. <laughs> I grew up watching fucking Teen Titans, yeah. and it's like that's what he always says. So like, yeah, it's fan service, and like clearly that is a Joss Whedon MCU. He knows they like the fucking fans, so they do that shit. Like you know, Teen Titans cool. Go has a whole Booyah yeah song, right? <laughs> booyah, booyah, <laughs> booyah. <laughs> Which side so note, the Teen Titan Go fucking songs are bangers. Uh, Teen <laughs> Titan Go movie is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> for an hour and a half, they knew parents had to take their kids to it, and they were like, "This one's for you, baby." So, booty. <laughs> Booty Scooty will probably <laughs> go down as one of my favorite comic book songs. Oh, you tell well, you tell about the show? Yes. I love um, shrimp and steak or like, like sirloin and steak, uh, shrimp. <laughs> one of the songs. <laughs> when they talk about like who, leg day. <laughs> like, those are the great, yeah, so, they're two times ago, got great songs. But so what I liked about. Um, Cyborg being like a integral part of the part, uh, movie at the end, like the whole third act was completely changed over. So Barry Allen, Flash is trying to uh, generate enough electricity so that Cyborg can um, separate the, the unity. He gets shot in his fucking Achilles. He stumbles. And like, you think that he they fail. The world starts fucking crumbling because the unity fucking sets, starts to terraform, so it's into apocalypse. The heroes lose. Barry's like, ah, ah, not today, Satan. Yeah. Speeds back, does the fucking reversal of time, gives Cyborg enough time to get the charge, separates the unity, 
What I would have loved to have seen at this point is fucking Flashpoint mixed with a little bit of fucking... Oh, because he reversed uh, time. He accidentally went too far. Yep. So, well, even not even that. So, But he, 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 he saw now, a glimpse. He now knows that he can reverse time. So he's like, hey, I can save my mom. He goes back in time. He saves his mom, but now he fucks up the new timeline. So this is where Jared Leto Joker teams up with um, Lex Luthor, who hopefully they make better than he was in fucking Batman Ooh, Jesse, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, Jesse no, Eisenberg. I mean, like, it was a good choice. To but have they Mark do Zuckerberg as they do the same thing, you know, same um, scheme. He tries to um, make Superman go crazy. You know, he kills fucking Amy Adams, Lois Lane. Yep, yep. Henry Cavill fucking goes nuts. Love it. Starts this whole regime. But you have Batman now who is trying to get this group of people together. So now it's like that nightmare scene. But twist. It's now Thomas Wayne who is actually Batman, who is... Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, fucking... Uh, um, James... James D. Morgan? J, uh, yeah, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Morgan. Jeffrey D. Morgan. Jeffrey D. Morgan's <laughs> character from um, the original... Not the original Batman, but, you know, the dad. Um, Batman you know, versus Superman. He's, he's trying to get these group of people together to save Barry, who has now been, like, tortured by Superman because... He knows he brought this timeline. And he knows he could go back. Yep. If he to. So I think that would have been awesome. And like they could do so much more with the Flashpoint. But I know they're going to do the Flash movie, so I'll give it. We'll see how it's going to be. They brought Mako Keith into it, so that's cool. Nah, we'll see. I, like, MCU's already done it. You good, so. Look at me. That's cool. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel about it. We'll, we'll see how it goes. That's, but. It's going to be fun. No, no. By the way, Nightmare... The nightmare scene, if we're just on it, would have been super awesome. Like, I would have loved a whole movie on that. Yeah. Otherwise, that's just not a movie. I'm very interested in that. Oh, Joker, Batman, but like murder Superman? Yeah, I'm cool. I, mean, I, I, I love the power rings. Like, if you fucking betray me, he's like, I will fucking kill you. You're like, like, that's great. Because <laughs> you're, like, you're like, Batman's not fucking around. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Spice, I see a little note that says Superman. Superman, this movie? Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, black silver suit. Yeah. Oh, the rise of Superman mm-hmm. comes back. Oh, when he shows up and the like axe hits the shoulder and he goes, my turn? Like, yeah. yeah, dog. So, But again, what I said to you, the only time Superman is cool when he's, when he's Odessa X yeah. Machina. But when he Goku's the shit. Both, both movies had probably one of my most... Favorite scenes out of everything. I'm glad that fucking we decided to keep it in. But it's the part where they, they resurrect Superman and he has just come back. He sees everybody and fucking um, Cyborg's defenses go fucking nuts and Superman starts attacking everybody. So my, my favorite part is the Flash is like, let me help. And he starts fucking running. And you see Superman have like Wonder Woman and Cyborg in a chokehold. Barry runs past oh, him, yeah. and he fucking looks at Barry in his eye, and Barry's like, "How oh. the fuck does he see me?" Like that is just like such a a small detail thing in like a movie, but it's like it, it makes so much sense. But it's like it, it was it was done really well. I'm glad they kept it in both movies. Um, I, I really enjoyed that part. So yeah, um, when he just sat there and he like he like and he's like, I got him, and then he just looks at him and he's like, <laughs> shit, you can see me? And he's like, he's like, yeah, but it's like they know he knows I'm just as fast. Although I hated in the fucking weed and cut the end scene of the like, yeah, again, I do appreciate fan service, but the whole Superman racing Flash thing was just like way too fucking campy. I hated it. I hated that they did that. They did a Superman vs. Flash thing? Yeah. At the end? Yeah. Uh, I know there was a whole episode based on, like, there was actually, like, an episode or a movie based off that. Yeah. 
and it's fine. Like I get it, you know. They always want to know who's faster than fucking each other, but like, yeah. good boy. <laughs> um, they don't need to. Sh- they don't need to show them their fucking movies. Just- no, they don't need. To, I like they always do that thing, and then like, I mean, look, Superman can fly. Flash has to go over buildings. We respect. <laughs> like it's gonna be always different. All right, so yeah, I mean, oh, I'm, just, I'm watching it right now. He shows up. Oh yeah, that's right. He says not impressed. He got this <laughs> axe right in his shoulder. Goes not impressed, and the ice blasts the axe and snaps <laughs> it in half. And you're like, oh, yeah. you will go. I will <laughs> say, like Superman in Snyder Cut was so fucking badass. Compared what to- he's supposed to be, yeah. like that's what he's supposed to be. Like so. I think it's Justice League War, like one of those just like like in the video, like in the animations, like Superman's taken over, right? <laughs> Batman goes on to like I like and then I think this is I, I forget which one it is, but he goes on to like a spaceship and he's like, do Batman shit. What is Batman? Man with fucking some batterings. <laughs> what do the batterings do? Explode. Why is he so successful? He's back in Batman. Literally, if you watch Superior Cafe, go to Batman. <laughs> it's hundred percent true. And then he frees Superman, and then fruit like yeah, like he's just like basically like oh shit, things just got real. <laughs> Even Batman's like ah, I got the alien on my side, and then he just messes people up. You're like that's what he's supposed to be. You take him out. Last ten minutes of the movie, yeah, shows back back up. Don't worry about it. It's what it is. He's Goku. He's a day. He's a Desus Machina. He's the he's the guy who's always going to win. Mm-hmm. But when you like. Like you, like you make it fun until but, oh shit! That's what all enemies do. So now that you actually say that, like having rewatched the Whedon version compared to the Snyder Cut, like they they literally say as much in the Snyder Cut, but they don't really make it that apparent in the Whedon verse. Because like Batman's like, hey, in the Snyder Cut, he's like, I made a promise on Clark's grave that I would do my best. But if I couldn't do my best, I need help. Even with that help, there's a good chance, like, we're not going to succeed. Like, we need him. Yeah. Whereas in, like, the weeding cut, they're just like, we can do this. And they're like, fuck, we can't do this. Uh, Maybe we should go ahead and, and, like, try to resurrect Superman. And, like, they're like, no, we shouldn't. And he's like, no. Like, we should. Whereas, like... In the Snyder Cut, like, when he's like, hey, maybe we should resurrect, like, Superman, like, they're like, no, and, like, Cyborg's like, no, like, we absolutely should, like, I've done the fucking math in my head while you guys were sitting here talking, like, we're not gonna fucking succeed. Like, uh, the problem is zero, yeah. bro. Like, <laughs> so it's like, that's, that's a good fucking point. Like, they know that they need fucking Superman. Like, he's gonna be the one that helps them win this, and then they fucking resurrect him. Yeah, he goes off. He almost kills fucking Batman because he doesn't know like who he is. Then he goes off with Lois Lane. Yeah. But he comes back at the end of the movie and he just wrecks shit. And oh, it's yeah. Like, that's what you want to... Like, that is like that is probably a, another one of the greatest fucking scenes where he's just like... He just shakes that shit off and he's like... Not impressed. All right, we ready? Let's go now. Which again, <laughs> to be honest, Henry Cavill plays a great Superman. He just he play when he is invested in a character, he plays a great fucking character. That's the Witchers people fucking love him. He grunts the shit out of that character. Yeah. Mm. You know why? Because he read into fucking Geralt of fucking backstory. Played the games two and a half times. Yeah. Him. He's got like Warhammer forty four thousand or some <laughs> weird shit. He's got like he's cool. In the nerdiest way. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, like, that's the thing. Any any fucking um, comic book movie that you watch and you listen to, like, the backstory of the characters and how they got into it, you see them, they're, like, they're reading the comics. So even, like, um, uh, what's her name? Brie Larson. Like, as much as people gave shit about her, like, she read the comics. She's yeah. like, I'm going to be... Carol Danvers as much as I can fucking be. Uh, and I thought she played a fine character. She did. <laughs> I mean, like, she's funnier than, like, she was portraying, mm-hmm. because Brie Larson's actually a pretty funny, like, like person and stuff like that, but, like, I mean, she's I mean, playing... She's, the character's just fine. She's actually really good. Now. 
it's a movie. Um, Scott Bowman. Like, she's such a bitch in that fucking movie, but I fucking love her in that. <laughs> oh, she's good. Though. She was she was one of the ex girlfriends that was uh she was dating uh, Chris um, Chris Evans Chris Evans in that movie who was the uh, skate like skate, action oh, hero. She, wait, was he? No, was she dating the skateboarder? Was she dating the? Uh, no, she was dating the um, the vegan. Right. Vegan. <laughs> oh, who's <laughs> Superman? Yeah. yeah, that movie was like weirdly on point. <laughs> Which, by the way, getting an Edgar Wright Ant Man, I'm still I like I still think Ant Man was great, but like Edgar Wright's version, what's that? About? Like, where's that? I want to see what your vision. Like, give me 15 minutes. Of it. Very curious. Like, like the idea that that's gonna be like. To music, <laughs> oh, sounds cool, man. <laughs> but no, I think Superman was the shit in this. I thought that, like, I, I, I listen. With everything said, I haven't seen the weedy cut, but like from what I've heard, from what I saw the stutter cut, it was fine. Honestly, <laughs> and so the, the, <laughs> the, the problem it's the mid-level MCU movie. Yeah. The funniest thing is, so my wife, my wife, God, God bless so. her, she puts up with all this bullshit. So last night I throw on the weeding cut and she goes, Did you fucking watch this? And I go, Yes, I did. I'm doing research for the show. And she's like, Okay. So then this morning I throw on the Snyder cut and she goes, Did you not just watch this fucking movie last night? I go, It's the remake of the original version. She's like, But the other version wasn't that old. Why would they fucking remake it? And I go, because the, the version that we did sucked so much, they had the old director come back and she was like, yeah, I watched it with you. That version fucking sucks. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> so it's it's very apparent that you can watch the Snyder Cut without watching the Whedon Cut and appreciate the movie. I don't think you can watch the Whedon Cut and appreciate what the movie is worth without also watching the standard cut. So that's where I'm going to leave it. I will also say this, that um, you're only allowed to kill aliens, apparently. That is very true in pretty much any superhero movie. Yeah, if they're an alien and they don't breathe on Earth and they weren't born on Earth, you're allowed to cut their heads off. (laughs) And we're supposed to just be like, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, you have Martian Manhunter in this. Oh, shit. Yes. Actually, before <laughs> we go into review time. He was cool. Martian Manhunter. <laughs> he just shows um, up. Like, he, I, like, keep, like I, I kept seeing my notes, and I'm like, I want to say something about Martian Manhunter. Yes. Like, I love that they tried to bring him in. Like, he was um, the. He's Lois. He was like the mom. He's for Martha. A bit. And then, yeah. Like, uh, so he's Martha <laughs> checking out Lois Lane after the death of Superman. Yeah. And then uh, I forget who else he was, but then he, he talks he to was Bruce. Like a, uh, Fucking or something. Yeah, and then he talks to Bruce at the mm-hmm. end because Bruce keeps having those uh like nightmares, mm-hmm. like the nightmare verse, yeah. nightmares. Which and then like basically he's like because there should be more movies and disappears. So which like, Snyder is basically Mark Like I I'm like okay, you guys set this shit up for like more movies, keep it going. Yeah, but Snyder was like, Don't yeah, I did. Stupid. They won't. Oh, I'm off. They won't. I know, but it's like, all right, so either nope. they do fucking, so let's say they do the Flash. Fine. <laughs> they, seen that so movie. They, so they, I've seen Flashpoint 45 and, times. But I'm, I'm saying, like, say, let's say they don't even do Flashpoint. They just do a Flash movie because apparently it's not supposed to be the same. They have. They, they show the trailer. Have, he goes back and save his mom. Oh, they do? Yeah. What? What the fuck? That's what I've seen. Like, they said that he goes back and saves his mom. Oh, there, we'll it's Flashpoint. And, and then he comes and, back, and, and then and Batman's Michael Keaton. He's like, "Oh no, like seems to change the time." So that's how they're doing it. I don't know. Oh, that makes well. That makes me like. All right, all right listen, we've talked about this. Right. Michael Keaton needs to stick around as Batman. And the Batman protege, Beyond. Thank you. And the protege, new Batman. Yeah. And then you're like, oh shit, here's a new character. Well, that's a new character development. But no, do a DCU. They're doing Batgirl. Batgirl's the new. Fucking Is it a movie from now on? Is it a movie? It will be. Cool. Do Batman Beyond live action on HBO Max. 
I don't they, know what they're doing. They just shoot. Like, well, you did yeah. Batman Woman and it failed. And I don't want to be like, it's because it's a woman. It's just because who gives a shit about the character? Both, both of them fucking sucks. So it's also because it's made by Greg Berlanti. Yeah. And he fucking, he like tells the same story over and over again <laughs> with different pieces. Like, I'm trying to be fucking progressive. And he's like, here's Rose. And you're like, uh, she's not a good actress. Yeah, like, she sucks in fucking. Uh, I'm just in black too. She sucked at she Wick, said, John Wick. She's like, I'm deaf. Like, oh, Actually, cool. I kind of liked it in John Wick. She didn't say shit and then John Wick killed her. And you're cool. <laughs> like, you did great. <laughs> Thanks for showing up and dying. Like, that was great. I actually forgot she was in John Wick until you said that. But yeah, yeah she was all right. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. If Gina, uh, what's her name? Fucking cancer from, chick uh, from Mandalorian. Mandalorian. She showed up and she was in Wick instead. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, she she might be. No, I'm like, she, she might be able to take Wick. And then I'm like, this might be more of a fair fight. Not like Is Gina Carano? Yes. Yeah. If Gina Carano showed up and was like, you oh, up in like sign language, I'd be like, maybe. Like, I don't know, Keanu. Which also, like, Keanu's like super huge in like in like that kind of BB, uh, BJJ world now. Why did he give you boys in there? <laughs> oh, Have I you, know. Have you watched Matrix yet? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Was it sucky? Yeah, it was All fine. Right. It was fine. Yeah. It's free, so I watch it. Gonna, I still gotta watch you it. You turn it anyways, everything. But like, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> I don't know if they didn't want him to like John Wick shit up, so like he never touched a gun. But he like had a weird, yeah, he had a weird push power. Man, I, yeah, I, I didn't kinda make me not want to watch. No, this. it was like Chris Evans push, and I was like, oh, weird. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I'll spoil it. Um, Trinity was also the one. All right, now I gotta watch this. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking sober up, <laughs> turn my hand over, and watch fucking Resurrections, and be like, "Fuck, this is dumb." All right, yeah. anyways, Jada Pinkett Smith's in it, boy. Is she? Yeah, she's oh, like an old. Boy. She's like an old, old like. Wait, so they brought Jada Pinkett uh, back, but they didn't bring back fucking uh, Morpheus. Uh, he's a uh, he's a statue, and they did bring back Morpheus. No, they didn't bring back Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, uh, no, but they brought back Morpheus. No, they didn't bring back Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. They didn't bring back Morpheus. Fuck you. Hold on. <laughs> but they brought back Morpheus. No, they didn't bring back Morpheus. They, His... they brought back some fucking younger dude. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, he's younger, but he's a ball of metals. All right, now I got one. <laughs> also, <laughs> Jessica Henwick's in it. Uh, the yeah. chick from fucking Einfest? Yeah. Is she good? She's fine. <laughs> uh, whole movie's fine. Now I'm, I'm so fucking. All right. Anyways, so an hour and a half, maybe two hours. We're gonna go, go ahead and review I guess our I watch fucking this. beers right now. So, <laughs> right. Wait, what are we doing at a five? What? So we did. We did a uh, five batterings and Finney Stones. Oh, I, actually, yeah. That's Thank kind you. Of what for. Let's do. It. We're gonna rate our beers out of uh, out of five batterings. All right. I had the Lagunitas or Lagun Lagunitas. I don't uh, know if that's how you really say it, but... What says it? Say Lagunitas. Yeah, but I don't know if that's how you actually pronounce it. That's how I always have. So Lagunitas. Lagunitas. That's what yeah. they want me to say. <laughs> Whatever. Maximus Colossus IPA. Uh, I thought it was good. I would give it a four out of five batterings. Oh, nice. All right. So I had the uh, Hindsight New England IPA from Timbiard Brewing Company. Personally, I like and that one. I am also going to give this a four out of five boring uh, batterings. Batterings. This was fucking delicious. It was like nice and juicy. Um, it had good hops, like not too fucking hard. This was a six point nine. Yeah. Um, Wait, Tema, you gave it a four out of five? Yeah. But you said fucking delicious. Yeah, it was fucking delicious. The hell's five? Like. It's going to be fucking life changing. Fair enough. All right. Continue. But yeah, this, this, was, this was really good. I, I, would, I would drink the fuck out of this all the time. I like hindsight. So, uh, all right. With that being said, if you like what you listen to, subscribe to our podcast. Uh, we'll also be on YouTube. As I mentioned in the last episode, uh, these previously were shortened, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and upload the entire episode so uh swears <laughs> and everything it's gonna be great less editing for me i love it but that's also because we have our uh the smash blurred uh which are mini sodes of smash bro where i also enjoy some drinks and discuss my favorite bits of useless knowledge random facts topics and my shower thoughts but obviously no beer review 
Um, you can also find us on Instagram. My handle is that eight bit life, and that's T H A T, the number eight B I T L Y F E. Uh, Sam, you can also find on Instagram at uh, S E C 87. And with that, we'll see, see you next, next episode. episode.